What's going on YouTube? This tutorial, I just want to show you how you can make a graph that compares current year numbers with prior year numbers, where the line that has the current year number will automatically adjust as new data comes in. So here, for an example, we have S&P prices uh, with blue line representing 2022, and the, the orange line representing the current year, 2023. And as we get more data, um, the line will progress for 2023, will progress with time. So first, I'm um, making a new sheet to kind of show you how I do this. So the input right here, um, just basically using the stock history function to get in historical S&P prices. So the first thing I like to do is to format the data, kind of like I have in sheet three, where I have one column for the 2022 years, another column for 2023 years. Um, so going here, saying 2022, and then for the dates, data, and then 2023, and then dates, data, and then prices, and then just call this prices, um, or we just call that prices, and then call that prices, and then call it dates, dates, and you kind of have that as a header. So um, I'm going to pause real quick and then put the dates in here, and then to kind of take a second to talk about what you know dates this actually has. So the 2022 grouping has dates for the first of the year, January 1st, 2022, all the way to the end of the year, December 21st, 2022. And there's the same thing for the um, current, for 2022, the current year, and having a date from the first of 2023 to the last date of 2023. And now for, for this, I'm going to have use a just a vlookup formula to get in the prices um you might be using you might be using a different function um but for this specific example using a vlookup to say okay uh, with s p prices for a given date so vlookup the first argument is the lookup value which for example is going to be date second argument is the table array um which is basically where we're going to be looking for the data which is just which is this right here and um column index number where do we want to return the data from so once you turn from second column and then range look up, do we want to have an approximate match, which would be true or an exact match would be false. Um, one thing to note with the SOC history function specifically is that it only reports data when there is trading prices, which is during the weekday. So we want to make sure that an error is returned to the weekends. Um, so for this, I want to type false, just because we want to have an exact match. Close parentheses, as you can see, is giving me an A. Well, why is that? That's because it's the first of the year and no stock was trade and stock was a trading on New Year's Day. Um, I'm going to go through and put in dollar signs, so making the uh, so to adjust reference and lock in the table that's being looked up. Uh, well, keeping the date and the column number um, floating, and as you can see, as I drag this down. It populates just numbers for um, whenever the stock was trading. So using control down arrow to go to the bottom and typing in a one here, and then control up arrow and copying everything down. Um, I put the one at the bottom just so I can do control C and then shift control down arrow and get just the data um, much more quick down the much more quickly. I know I, I ran through that pretty, pretty quickly, but um, just to copy paste a bit faster. And then control C, control V, and doing the same thing for 2023. So as you can see, the reference change for the date. Going to the bottom, typing in one so I can copy and paste the data faster. Then now copying and pasting the data all the way to the bottom. So now we want to adjust the data a bit to make sure that if there's an error, an NA is returned. For this particular example, the NN and NA is returned if something isn't found but we want to make sure that this is going to be consistent and it's not going to be a ref error or something like, like that and the reason why is because and an a error um, doesn't show up on a graph it just an n n a just shows up as blank on a, whenever you graph it in excel um so now i want to wrap these boogie lookup functions in if in if error and then comma if there's an error we want to make sure it turns an n a copying and pasting that down and then similar thing for this we look up. If error, and then what do you want it to return? Once you return NA.
Okay, so now we have this underway. We want to go through and then go ahead and make the chart. So first thing is we're going to make a basic line chart for the 2022 data and add in a new series for this current year's data. So to do that, just control shift down arrow, then pressing right arrow, and then just going to insert and then recommend the charts and then throwing in a basic line chart. Control X to cut it and then control V to get it right there. Now I'm going to do the same thing for 2023. So to uh, to add in a new series 2023, we're going to click on chart filters and we're going to click select data. And then under the different series, we want to go ahead and add a new series. What series name do you want this to be? Want this to be named 2023? And you want the series value to be the prices. Click OK, and we're going to go ahead and just adjust the name of the series one from series one to 2020, from just series one to 2022, to reflect how it's 2022. OK, and now we have kind of the fundamentals of this chart. But as you can see, we're going to want to edit this a bit to uh, make sure that it looks the way, the way that we want it to. So one thing is you can see the year is 2022. We want the, to format this to where it only shows the month and the day and not the year because um, obviously we want to you know, have this data because the date of the chart actually reflects both years. So just we're going to right click on the axis and then the format axis pops up. On the right, you're going to see these three bars. Scroll to the bottom, you're going to see an option for number where you can adjust the date and you can adjust the format code to just have month, 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 dash, day, day, or month, 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 slash, day, day, day. And then add, as you can see, now it only has a month and a day, or, yeah. And then you can, uh, you can adjust this how you see fit, but these are just a couple basic things I would do. So now we only have the month and the day, and the day showing for the data. And as you can see, the, the y-axis only has numbers. We want this to be formatted as currency. So right click on that axis, click format axis, scroll to the bottom from category, just to change out the currency with zero decimal places. And you want to make sure that we have a legend. So you can see, you know, what chart, you know, what line goes to what year. And you want to adjust range of the y axis too. So clicking on right, right click on the axis, click format axis, and then click on um, and click axis options under bounds. You can see minimum and maximum. So you want to just change that to just 300 roughly. And the reason why I did that, so it just looks a little bit more zoomed in, maybe 350. So you can see it much better. Um, and you can see SP prices. You can just type whatever title you want. 22, 23 over 22. Uh, or not, I mean, it's not SP, but just buy. And here you have it. You, you might want to do some additional formatting to get it the way that you want it. But now you can easily see how the SP has performed in 2022 and how it's just generally performed comparatively in, 2000, in 2023. Um, yeah, that's it. I hope you found this tool to be helpful. If you did, like, subscribe, comment, thanks so much for watching, and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Nearing 900 subscribers, so every subscriber is so huge. Um, thank you for watching. Have a great day.